Welcome back. If you just joined us, we've been looking at the overlapping challenge in the Nigerian Immigration Service due to the 2014 recruitment stampede in the Nigerian Immigration Service and also the several reforms going on in the Nigerian Immigration Service. And our guest on this episode of Question Time has been the Controller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandidi Dungwewe. Let's now look at Border Patrol. What are you doing to improve security in this area? I think this Border Patrol is a big challenge. A lot of resources are required. It takes more than a good will to patrol the borders. We need equipment. Uh, we need training. Uh, above all, we need to work with our partners to do this. When, our, when countries like the Schengen system or the EU establish a common border, they ensure that there were a lot of facilities to do this patrol without necessarily the borders in existence. Technology, international cooperation will assist us. But I'm glad to say this year, uh, if things work well, we'll have little resources to buy a lot of things for border patrol, surveillance equipment, uh, patrol vehicle. It will change the way we do things. And my dream is to establish an effective immigration border patrol unit. We already have one, but they have to be more trained, more militant than, for example, a passport officer. A passport officer is supposed to provide service, but the border patrol officer has to work in hard terrain. I want to train that officer to be able to work in that hard terrain, but I need equipment. What's the solution to the illegal borders we have in the country? We understand that there are about over 5,000 illegal borders. It, it, it needs more than immigration for things to happen. When people talk about illegal points of entry, I think people misunderstand the concept. Go to Katsana, go to Sokoto, Axis, go to Medugur, where the land is open. And in some of these areas, no good roads. So a truck, a, a, a pickup goes through anywhere. How do you control such situation? We need the support of government to provide infrastructure. For example, if government decides to provide a good road from Nigeria to Niger, together with the Niger, or under the support of a course, provide good road network, provide a modern border patrol unit, provide a good market. What is the attraction that you have to travel on the sand huh? for 10 hours to come to Nigeria while you can travel on the road for one hour? We can do the control better so that we know anybody who, who moves around in the sandy area, the difficult terrain, where you have to spend 10 hours to come to your destination. We know you have a criminal intent. But when every road is the same, when every road has no facility, patrol become difficult. But despite that, it is our responsibility to do this patrol. I need a lot of vehicles to do this. And this year's budget will provide a lot of opportunity. What strategy are you adopting to eradicate human trafficking and all other vices along the borders and other transborder banditry? As you are aware, Nigeria is a signatory to the TOC. Transnational Organized Convention of the United Nations. Uh, these protocols are three in nature. Small arms, human trafficking, and smuggling of migrants. I'm glad to tell you that we have an important role as a service, as immigration, in all these three protocols of the United Nations, which Nigeria is a signatory. Uh, one, human trafficking. Although there is an agency responsible for human trafficking, but we are in charge of mobility of persons. We are, mig we are a migration agency. We take care of people coming and leaving the countries. We do a lot of arrests, and we hand over to the, our sister agency, NAPTI, to prosecute. Uh, we also recently, in 2015, act. I'm glad to tell Nigerians that the smuggling of migrants had been criminalized in the hand of immigration. So if you smuggle, the difference is very small. Uh, if you decide to take somebody to... Uh, Libya because you feel he will get a job. Uh, you take his money, uh, you cross him through the border. That's smuggling. You're not going to exploit him. You took his money and took him across the national borders. It's smuggling. It's an offense now under the act. But for trafficking, when you take a woman across the national borders, you took her to another territory or you took a small boy to another territory to be working as a slave. Still earning money is human trafficking. As far as we are concerned, we are committed to fight this crime. But in recent times, there has been a crisis of uh, uh, cattle uh, theft across the borders. 
and people are pointing at immigration. <laughs> they say, oh, also immigration knows there are a lot of foreigners. We know in the olden days there are a lot of foreigners coming across our borders. But I assure you, if we have enough resources to fight this crime, we will be able to work with our international community. So, well, my intention is to create a liaison office in all the borders. Uh, you know, we don't like to speak French. It's very sad. <laughs> Nigerians have refused to speak French, despite the fact we are surrounded by all French-speaking countries. I have already developed a strategy to ensure French-speaking immigration officers are at our land borders so that they can communicate, they can talk, they can exchange ideas with their counterparts in Benin Republic, in Niger, and, and Cameroon. Let's come back to the issue of internal security by examining the rules of engagement of immigration officers deployed to the northeast and the Boko Haram prone areas. What are you doing about officers reported to the extorting money from IDPs? Uh, we have realized that there are some few bad elements. There are not many few bad elements, uh, especially in Meduguri. Uh, because the JTF has stayed longer. When I came on board, I found out that our JTF team has stayed very long in Medjugorje. We will do something to make sure we change them. They started asking money from innocent people. Uh, this I have already addressed uh, our officers. I have sent circulars around, and I heard that there is a change in the field. If you continue taking money from somebody who is already in a very bad condition, I think we have become useless citizens in uniform. We are supposed to be citizens in uniform to save our nationals. We are not a better citizen, I keep saying. Anybody in uniform is a person in uniform to save a citizen, but not to harass his own nationals. I'm doing my best to ensure that this is not done. CGI Mohamed Obandide, thank you very much for making our time to be part of this episode of Question Time. We wish you the very best of luck in your reforms. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And that's it on this episode of Question Time. You may also send us your comments on our various social media platforms showing on your screen. Join us next week on another exciting episode of the show on Channels Television. Many thanks for watching. I'm Benga Ashiru saying goodbye.